Hello everyone. So in today's session, we'll be uh, discussing on uh, this uh, layout manager, Java layout manager. In the previous session, we have already seen how we add, uh, how we create a window from JFrame and how we can add a button or a text field onto it. But what uh, we use the concept was uh, to add a button onto the window, we were using coordinates. But many a time, there will be uh, very complex webs, uh, complex windows in which uh, it will be difficult to go uh, and add every component with the help of their coordinates. So instead of using their coordinate, uh, we also have another option, which is called layout uh, managers. And these are classes which can be used to implement the um, uh, or add uh, any uh, button or text field onto the windows. So as you can see here on the right hand side, there is a, a picture you can see. Uh, this is the first photo. Let me share. Yeah, if you can see, this is the first photo. Uh, border layout is the one. In border layout, what happens? All the uh, four corners, all the four borders of the window will have one component and one component will be in the center. So in the north, in the top, that is called north, we can add a button or a text field, whatever we want in the south, similarly east and west, and then in the center. This is called uh, border layout. Then we have a grid layout. You can see on the right hand side, there's a grid layout uh, in which the uh, complete window is divided into a number of rows and columns and we can add uh, buttons or text fields or any items in one cell. Then you can see in that uh, bottom right, there's a flow layout. In flow layout, uh, components are added line by line. So uh, when the first line will be uh, over, then the new buttons or new text will be uh, added automatically on the second line, then third line, and so on. And then we have a grid bag layout. Now, grid bag layout, uh, in grid bag layout, what we can do is uh, we can add more components here and there. We have more flexibility onto it, uh, how to uh, control uh, everything. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll uh, give uh, one uh, example of each and then we'll move on to some more complex uh, windows. So let me first come to the, I've already written the program uh, so that we can save some time. This is an example of border layout. Okay, so first I'll run this program so that uh, I can make you understand what is a border layout. And let me run. Yes. Now you can see that in border layout, let me open the window. Now you can see in the border layout, in the window itself, there is one button on the top border. There is one button in the below border. Then on the right hand side border, that is called east and on the left hand side border, that is called west and one, one in the center. This is the border layout in which uh, whenever we add a button or a text field or any component, we have to uh, mention on which border it will be added. So you can see here that in this we are adding a button with the caption north and we are mentioning that this will be going in the north. Then we are adding a button in south and we are mentioning that this will go in the south. Then we are adding a button and uh, we are mentioning it west, then east and then run in center. Then we are setting the size and we are uh, setting it, the visibility to true. And in the main, we are just calling this uh, object. So let me make this program uh, a bit easier for you to understand. So I'll, uh, I'll make some changes to it. I'm creating button B1. This button B1 is will go in the north. So 
I'll mention B1 here. Then I'll create to the J button. Then I'll create a J button. B2 and this is what is B2. So this is B2. Then I'll add J button to B3 and I'll put this in the rest. There are four borders and one in the center. So I'll be using four buttons for four borders and then one for the center. Now you can see what we are doing. This is uh, the name of the program, Border Layout Example. This is a user defined name. This is the constructor in which we are constructing the window. So what we are doing, we are setting the title of the window, Border Layout Example. You can see a Border Layout Example. Then we are adding a function set default close operation, exit on close. What will this do? When we click this, uh, the window will get closed. Then we are setting the layout. In the last session, uh, the layout was set to null. Whenever we want to add a button or a text field on a particular coordinate, we do not want to use any layout. So we remove all the layout. Uh, but in this program, we are setting the layout as a border layout. Now, once the border layout is set, we are creating five buttons. and this is how we are adding first button. B1 button is added to the north, so it is going here. B2 button is added to the south, so it is going here. B3 button is going to the west, this. B4 button is going to the east, this. And then we have a button at the center, so this is the center button. Now we are setting the size of this window, 400 by 500, and then we are putting this as a uh, visibility too, so that it comes on the screen. And there are two functions which I have uh, put in the comment. If we do not want to set the size, we can use pack. What will this pack do? This will create a window of the smallest size in which all these components can be shown. So pack, is a default size window, the smallest window size in which all these five buttons will be shown. Uh, but if we want our own size, then we have to use set size. Similarly, we have a set location relative to. This set location relative to function is used to show the window at a particular position on the screen. If we set it to null, it will be coming on the center. So if we remove this comment and whenever we'll uh, run the program this um, this window will be shown at the center so if we do not uh, use this it will come at the any position onto the screen and then set visibility is true now what we have to do we have to create object of this to create object of this so that the constructor will be called and all the uh, window will be created through the constructor so instead of creating the object of this, we can also uh, call this swing utilities dot invoke later. And this will also perform the same function. Instead, if we can write it this way, 
uh, like what we have to do, we have to create object of this class. Why we'll create object of the class? Because as soon as we create the object of the class, the constructor will be called and all the code we have written in the constructor. So what will happen? Uh, this uh, These codes will execute and we'll get the window running. Now, let me uh, run this program again. Let me close this window first. And I'll compile this once more to show you, show you the output. See, it is coming in the center since we have removed the, um, the comment from set location relative to uh, when we put it null, it comes in the center. Now try to understand this. In border layout, what happens is there are four borders in any uh, any window, the top border, the bottom border, the left and the right, which is called west and the east, and then we have a center. Now, suppose we want to have multiple buttons in the center or multiple uh, components on either border, then how we will do it, we'll discuss it. But first of all, we have to understand uh, the border layout because this is uh, very commonly used when we are creating the window. So I'll, I think this part is uh, clear. What we are doing, we are setting the title, which is shown here. Then we are calling this function so that when we click this button, the close button, the window will get closed and everything will be removed from uh, the memory. And then we are setting the layout to new border layout. And once we set the layout to border layout, we can add five components at five different positions as we are doing it here. So I'll close this and then I'll move to the next example. This was the border uh, layout example. Then I'll come to the next example that is grid layout example. Grid layout example is also very interesting. In grid layout, what happens? We set layout as grid layout. What we were doing in border layout, you can see we are setting layout as border layout. In grid layout, what we are doing? In grid layout, we are uh, putting the grid layout and then the number of rows and number of columns are uh, decided here. We are showing that there will be two rows and there will be two columns. And then the first two component will go in the first row, since in the first row there are you know, two columns, so it will go in the first row. Then the second row will have two columns, it will go in the second row. We have uh, the pack function called here so that it will pack function creates the smallest size window in which all these four buttons will be uh, shown. And then we have set visibility as true. Let me run this program to show you what is happening. See, you can see, I'll show you the output. When we use pack, this is the smallest size window that will be shown because we are not giving any size. If we give size, it is created like this. So now you can see there are two rows, first row and second row. Each row has two options to be added. So first row will be filled by the first two components. Second row will be filled by this uh, last two components. Now, if we want to increase, suppose we want three uh, buttons, then in uh, each row, then we have to increase the columns. So suppose I want to increase the column, I'll increase it like this. And then what will happen? This will be, all these buttons will be added in the first row. This will be the first row. And in the second row, this will be the second row. Okay. So let me run this program again since we have changed this 
So there will be two rows, but each row will have three columns. Now, if I run the program, what will happen? There is no change as yet. Let me see what is happening. Number of rows, number of columns. Okay, is there any error in the program? Grid layout, the number of columns is not changing. Let me see why it is not happening. Let me add two more buttons because they are one, two, three, four, five, six. There has to be six components. So let me run the thing and yes. Since we, are, we were putting less number of components, it was not functioning properly. Now you can see what is happening. See, now we have two rows, but three columns. So every row has three buttons, first row and the second row. Similarly, if we want, suppose we want three rows and two columns, then what will happen? This will be the second row. Okay. So this will be the second row. And this will be the third row. See, this uh, design part is very important. You have to understand it because once we move on to uh, the project, which we are going to start very soon, you'll be uh, re uh, requiring these concepts to be in one category. Now, if you see what we have done, we have created two rows. As you can see, this is the smallest size window, so I cannot even drag it. Yes. So we have now three rows and two columns. In this way, we can have in grid layout, uh, grid means cells. So there will be total three into two, six cells, and all these components will be added in the cells as I'm showing it here. I'll end this program. I and all these programs that we have used. And then I'll move to the third type of layout that is flow layout. See in flow layout, what we are doing, we are adding new flow layout. In border layout, we are adding border layout. In grid layout, we are adding grid layout. So this is flow layout. And as the name suggests, the components will be added in a flow. What do we mean by flow is that first row will be filled, then the second row will be filled, then the third. Suppose I, you can see, suppose this is the size of the window. So on the first row only, we can have uh, three buttons. So it will automatically adjust. If I decrease the size, you can see it is coming uh, like this because in the row, uh, in the first row, there is only a uh, place to accommodate two buttons. If I even decrease it, it will be like this. So uh, in flow layout, what happens? First row will be filled, then the second row, then the third row, then the fifth row, yeah, like this. So this is how we do it. So these are the three important layouts, the flow layout, the grid layout, and the model layout. Now, Whenever we will be uh, requiring any, any window, those windows will have different sort of layouts. Suppose I'll, let us see a calculator app. You can see this calculator app. So if we are designing a calculator app, you can see there is a border at the top and then we have a grid layout at the bottom. So whenever we are creating any app, then there will be uh, different layouts that will be mixed, which is called hybrid. We can make two or more layouts combined to get our type of 
window that we want. So suppose we want to create a, a calculator like this. What we will do, we will, uh, you can see, we'll create this app for you. So uh, when we uh, see this, what is there? At the top, there are uh, two rows, first row and the second row with memories. And then we have a grid. So we'll have to mix it. So now I'll try to mix it and create some uh, layout so that it is more uh, interesting and understandable also. So if we want to have multiple components in one cell, uh, be it a border layout, be it a, a grid layout, then we have to use a panel. The panel is a container in which we can add multiple components and then we can add that panel onto the window. So how do we do that? Let us make a very simple program directly so that we understand. I have a few panel examples here. And I'll show you how this is happening. So yes, I'll try to run this. This is for calculator. Let me run this and then I'll explain. I'll make some changes in this so that you understand it properly. Okay. Now, as you can see, in this example, we have a grid layout and we have a text component, text field at the top. You can see we have a text field at the top. And then we have something at the center. So what we are doing here, what we are doing here is, let us see, first we are creating a frame object. Why we are creating a frame object? Because we want to have a window. Then we are, want these 10 buttons, 0 to 9, so we have created these 10 buttons. Then we are creating a text field for uh, putting things at the top. Now you can see at the top, okay, this way, we will have to use a step. I'll make a lot of changes in this. So first I'll make you understand. So these are the components. In the main, you can see we are putting the code in the main. So this is the window. So I'll use the calculator. We want to design a calculator for us. So this is a calculator. We have a text field creating a text field to display text. Then we have buttons. Now see what we are doing here. We are creating an object of panel class, J panel. This we are doing it first time and setting the layout three by three. And we are adding these nine buttons in the panel. So this panel has a grid layout and this is panel is in itself a container. We are putting these nine buttons on the panel. Then in the window, we are adding text field one in the north and panel in the center. You can see we are adding T1 in the north and panel in the center. Then we are setting sides and setting it visible. So here you can see that a window has by default border layout. And in the center, we want nine buttons. So what we are doing, we are doing it this way. And you can see the output. This is the output that we are getting. You can see in line number 54, in the frame, we are adding text box T1 at the north. So it is coming at the top. And we are putting all these buttons in panel and we are putting the panel in the center. So it is coming it this way. And then we are setting the size and everything. So you can see, we can also create it like this. 
now let me add some more things to it what we want at the top at the top you can see we have only text field but we want suppose we want a label calculator program and then the text field so we want two things at the top so how will we do that for the top we want a text field and a label so i'll create j label class l1 plus to new j label and here calculate and Label L1 equals to new J label calculator. Now we want this calculator and text field at the top. So I'll create a panel class object. A panel top equals to new J panel. And here I'll give new grid layout in grid layout to this panel and in the grid layout there will be number of rows will be two and columns will be one and in the top panel i'll add l1 in the first row there can be only one item in the first row you can see there are two rows and each row will have one item. So I've added label, calculated label at the top and I'm adding top dot add text field one. And now when we are adding this to the frame, I'll add this at the top. So now what we are doing, you can see in the north at present what we have the program that was running at the top there was only text field we want a label also so what we have done is we have created a panel you can see we have created a panel panel is a container with two by one layout and then we have added l1 and t1 and in the frame what we are doing we are adding the panel at the north the name of the panel is stop. It can be P2, P3, anything. Now let me run this program. I'll run this program. Now see. We have both the programs for you. This was the first program. Okay. So in the first program, as you can see, there was only a text field at the top. Now we have a calculator this written at the top and a text field here in which we can input some value or we can use some value and then we have a grid layout now suppose at the bottom we want some more uh, things at the bottom okay so what we can do at the bottom we can have uh, the four uh, the operators uh, Z in the plus minus multiplication division and equals to and zero. Zero is also not there. You can see we do not have zero. So what we want to do, we can have, uh, we can add it in the center also, zero button. Then we can add uh, the operate uh, equals to and clear. And then we can add four operators plus minus multiplication division to this so i'll keep this these two will do now i'm coming again here we have a button zero already which we have not used since it is only three cross three so i'm creating one more row so now we have four rows that means we can add three more um, uh, buttons so the first button will be zero that will go then we'll have one button as B 
PQ. And this will be equals to, and then we can have B. C for clear. Okay. Now these two buttons needs to be declared. So we declared here B E Q and B C. So we have these three buttons. Now we want to add these three buttons. So since we have four rows, so I'll create one more row here. B zero. B E Q and then we have B C. Okay. Now let me run this program. See now we have four rows zero equals to and clear button. If you want to see the previous, see we have these windows with us and in the first window in the first window there was only one text field at the top we have added at the top a label and a text field then in the third program what we are doing we are adding uh, one complete row okay at the uh, as a fourth row in the center, but we are missing the operators. So what we can do, the operators plus minus multiplication division, we can add the four operators at the bottom. So to for that, what we will do, we'll add four more buttons. So I'll create four more buttons. Those buttons will be B plus B minus B mul and B So these are the four buttons that we want at the bottom. So now I'll create a panel. Create a panel. This is this will go at the bottom. Plus to new J panel, and this will have new flow layout. Let us see how to use flow layout also in this same program. And uh, in this bottom panel, we'll add the four buttons. What are the buttons? B plus bottom and B minus, then we can add bottom dot add B mul and bottom dot add B. These are the four buttons and at the bottom not and then we have to add the bottom is called the south. So in the frame, we are adding the panel. What is the name of the panel? The name of the panel is bottom. And where this will go? This will go at the south. That is at the bottom. Okay. Now let me run this project.
This is null pointer exception. Comp is null. That is at line number. Let me check where is this. Coming because comp is null. Mm -hmm. e j panel bottom first okay okay yes these four buttons we have not initialized we have not created we have just declared so we have to declare these buttons also First one, you know, J Can put this in box plus minus this will be multiplication symbol and this will be multiplication symbol. And now we can add because if we do not instantiate the components, we cannot. Now you can see in this we have used at the bottom in the flow layout, we have plus minus multiplication division. These are the four. Uh, these are the four uh, buttons that we are adding at the bottom. In this way, we can mix and you know, all the types of layout and then we can create a lot of program. I'll uh, keep it uh, short today for this and I'll share all these programs to with you, all of you. This will be in your dashboard as well. So try to practice all these programs that we have discussed, border layout, uh, then we have a grid layout, then we have flow layout, then we have panels, and in, uh, with the help of panel, we can mix multiple layouts. I hope uh, you all have understood this. Thank you very much.